imagine Rachel. Rachel is one of the 151 individuals living in British Columbia who's living with autism. Now, other individuals like Rachel living with autism face many uh, challenges, especially in terms of social development. This is why we really appreciate organizations such as yours who works with individuals such as Rachel to foster these key life skills such as communication and teamwork and that is through sports and other recreational activities. Hi, my name is Helena, and these are my colleagues, Joey and Crystal. We are here consulting, and today we are here today, and we're so excited here today to help you, Ms. Katie Harandi, um, to help PAN achieve its ultimate impact. So let's just quickly look over a quick executive summary. So, uh, we did recognize that your organization currently is facing three key challenges uh, to facilitate its growth. The first one being the lack of funding, um, and the strategy here is to a corporate sponsorship. And the second key issue that we identified was there's an increased demand for staff and more volunteers to facilitate this expansion. And our strategy here today is through an employee exchange initiative through this corporate sponsorship. And lastly is the facility space uh, sourcing. And the strategy here is by reaching out to other uh, universities in British Columbia. And the ultimate impact here today is an NPV of $420,000, which will help 360 more families, such as Rachel's. So let's just quickly look over Can's vision. Your vision is every individual and family living with autism is understood, accepted, and supported in all community spaces. And this is exactly what your organization is doing for individuals such as Rachel. Through the, through, um, the programs that your organization hosts uh, through sports, you are fostering and enabling um, the autism community to bring them together. Now, let's just look at a quick analysis of your organization. And first, I'd like to highlight the key strengths, because we believe that your organization is in a very strong position to facilitate your growth and your expansion. So as an organization, your uh, lead sponsor is the Vancouver Canucks, with over 26% of your total revenues coming from the Vancouver Canucks. And you do have tremendous support from the BC government. In terms of products, so you host over 537 programs in 21 communities in BC currently. And we believe that you can extend this um, growth. Again, you do have diverse program offerings, such as swimming and hockey and skating. In terms of your clients, so as of 2018, you are currently working with 2,000 families living with autism. In British Columbia, there are over 16,000 individuals who are living with autism, and we believe you can capture the entire um, community. And again, in terms of uh, com competition, so relative to your competitors, CAN has a solid network of sponsors and individual donors and families, so we believe you, you are very um, competitive in this environment. So the ultimate takeaway here is CAN has the current infrastructure in place to expand its reach to more families living in British Columbia. CAN also does face a few threats. So the first one being uh, lack of sustainable sources. So currently your revenue streams come from government, individual sponsors and donors, uh, but you, do, you currently don't have a sustainable source of revenue streams. Again, you do have a high ratio of staff to program participants relative to your competitors. Uh, in terms of product offerings, so th these are very cost intensive programs and we do recognize that you currently are not able to increase the price. Again, you do have 62 of your total programs that are experiencing high demand. So as a result, a lot of the individuals who would like ac access to your programs are currently waitlisted. And your clients, so again, there's a large number of families in British Columbia who currently don't have access to programs. There, there are over 16,000 individuals uh, who is your potential market cap here. Um, in terms of competition, so you are competing with um, several other organizations, especially um, in this uh, specific industry for facility space. So the ultimate takeaway here is to increase uh, your program's offering can meet a sustainable source of revenue, and that's exactly what we are here to recommend for you today. Now, let's just look at your key stakeholders. So these are the families, and the families, they want to foster these social skills um, with, 
to kids living with autism, and that is through sports, because sports is a very uh, safe environment for individuals to gain these key life skills, such as communication and teamwork. Your donors, they want to support the autism community and the board of director. They want to achieve your organization's ultimate mission to deliver the highest impact. So your opportunity statement here for you is how can PAN effectively achieve its mission to deliver the greatest impact? And now I'll pass it on to Joey to go over your alternatives and your recommendations. Thanks, Helena. So we now do recognize that PAN has a great infrastructure that can pursue uh, further operations to make it a not-for-profit and success. Now let's just discuss how could we help for individuals like Rachel and more families get to a level where they feel safe and feel, uh, provide those resources to autistic individuals for them to grow in the future. Let's begin with our decision criteria. So we identified your stakeholders. Now your stakeholders matter to us, and that's why all our alternatives are tailored toward their needs. We want to make sure that their actions align with CAN's mission and vision. We want to make sure our actions achieve that sustainable revenue source so that we can have funding for your future programs. And we want to create value and impact for these interested individuals because they are your end clients. And moreover, we want to make sure that your actions pursue growth. Now let's go first to the first issue, the lack of funding. We can identify two potentials, whether it be an external revenue stream or an internal revenue stream, because you don't want to actually increase the prices of your programs right now, which is totally understandable. We, we felt that external streams through sponsorship is the best alternative. Grants are very volatile and can be pulled with any unit. That's why we felt that it wasn't sustainable in the long term. Moreover, with, um, with donations, you do have a great donation base, but we want to secure that sponsorship to secure a further relationship in the future. This ensures that sustainability. And with internal revenue streams, that program base, again, is not um, a viable alternative. So with the demand of staff and volunteers, we're excited to engage more volunteers rather than hire more staff. It's a great source for you, as that you don't incur any cost. Moreover, you're expanding your reach with the community. We're going to do so by creating that um, employee exchange program, which will garner more corporate volunteers. And we're going to make sure that your donors, feel, uh, your volunteers, feel appreciated so that we retain them in the future and make sure that they are, uh, feel welcomed and, make valuable, and are valuable within the company. So moreover, with the sourcing appropriate facilities, we identified three possibilities, that being BC universities, municipalities within British Columbia, and community spaces. Now the reason we chose BC universities was again for this relationship factor. All three provide potential sources of facilities, but the uh, BC universities has great space and great, moreover, student, uh, student body that you can secure for potential uh, volunteer relationships. And that's why we chose it here today. Now with this recommendation, how can we help ensure that Rachel has those necessities to be successful in the future? So with our action items, the first being developing that corporate sponsorship, we did identify a risk of weakening the Vancouver Connects relationship that we have right now. The second being developing that sponsorship, ex um, uh, sponsorship exchange program with these corporate um, employees. We do recognize that there is a risk of a lack of these volunteers. And lastly, with these BC universities, we did, we did have identified in the materials that there are time restrictions. But Crystal will mitigate these risks later in the presentation. So to dive in, um, so further, we're going to first develop that corporate purchase sponsorship with a focus on companies with uh, values in active living. And what well, can we offer to these companies? Well, we can apply employment opportunities to volunteer for CAN, which is what we feel is very exciting and a good opportunity for your organization. Next, again, we can have uh, possibly branding um, options, publicity, and promotional materials. And more, more importantly, what we're excited about is that you can get tax charity hours for these individuals in the companies. Um, so while they're volunteering for your organization, they in turn can get an incentive to be excited about volunteering for a camp. Lastly, what can the sponsor offer us? What we're asking for is um, capital contribution amounting to $420,000 and a potential volunteer pool that we can increase your space in. So the takeaway here is that this creates uh, capital flexibility that CAN can use towards their programming. Now with the um, ideal corporate sponsor, we did identify that uh, idea of candidate was MEC, which is a uh, sports and outdoors company. We felt that they have great value alignment. Um, we want to make sure that people are there who seek experience with not-for-profit 
and that the company is large enough to help us fund $150,000 in 2019 that Crystal will uh, discuss in her. So with that employee exchange initiative, we're going to do this through that corporate sponsorship, and what we're focusing on here is that it allows individuals from the corporation to work within the not-for-profit sector and those who are trying to seek experience. What we're excited is that those hours volunteered, uh, that these employees volunteered, will be directly um, donated to CAN in, it, um, in terms of the salaries that they would have earned working for the company. And we think this is exciting because it provides benefits to both sides of the playing field. And we're going to focus on donor appreciation as well. We did identify that you do host an annual gala each year, so this, we think this is a perfect opportunity to highlight these individuals who have put their time and sweat into your company and to make sure that they are recognized for all their hard work. And the takeaway here is that it creates a new volunteer for our CAN in terms of, of these employees and promotes volunteer retention due to the appreciation. Second, how are we going to reach out to university, or BC universities? So we're going to do this through um, personal <coughs> relationships. We're going to develop those with, uh, with BC universities for sourcing. We want to do this because BC universities are in centralized locations of the city. So these are uh, areas that uh, families with uh, autistic individuals can travel to easily. Moreover, universities have great facilities uh, offerings and have a student body that we can target for potential volunteers. The takeaway here is that it creates a main source of facility that you can go to to run your programs and that it promotes community investment, which we think is great. Now let's move on to Crystal's favorite topic, money. <laughs> Thanks, Joey. So Joey always says that my favorite topic is money, and it's for two simple reasons. The first one being that with money, it ensures that organizations such as CAN can always make impact, and for a second, it also ensures that it will um, give your organization long-term sustainability, which is what uh, CAN needs in the long term. Also, speaking to Rachel, I personally feel for organizations such as yours because my nephew also lives with autism. And I believe that with organizations such as CAN, it really ensures that this sense of community really establishes a sense for kids such as my nephew to be involved in the community and not have to suffer through these things that kids in the past would have. So let's talk money and talk about the feasibility of the recommendation you provided for your organization today. So the first part is that we are going to be reaching out to these, oh sorry, this is why Joey does the tech and not me. <laughs> so the cost of recommendation, um, moving on to our three tiered plan here, is develop these corporate, developing these corporate sponsorships. And to do so, we want to find which sponsors we are interested in, also develop a package for them to ensure they know what is part of sponsoring um, our organization and also we want to secure this sponsorship within the next year and it'll cost around $20,000. The second part to our recommendation is developing this partner exchange program. As Joey mentioned, we want to ensure we're partnering with a company that has volunteers and um, people who really want to be involved in CAN so that we have a lot of volunteers in the future for when the organization decides to expand. The last part of our recommendation was approaching these BC universities that we have a place for facilities. Not only will this ensure helping your operational efficiency, but this will give a place for your organization to expand to boards and also give you access to those students who could potentially be volunteers in the future. And the cost will be around $8,000. So the overall cost of recommendation is around $58,000. So with what money? How can we ensure that we have the money to go through with this recommendation you provide for your organization? With this corporate sponsorship, we want to find a company that is willing to donate at least $150,000 on an annual basis, potentially increasing that amount uh, depending on how much our impact is increasing uh, per year. The last part, or the second part for of what money is the $10,000 in savings. As we partner with these different universities, we're hoping that we can ensure uh, operational efficiency by using these facilities such as universities to uh, decrease the amount they're charging to host your facilities such as swimming and skating. So with additional money, you'll have around $160,000 to support this recommendation. So if you look at the NPV, based off of the next four years here, you can see that the net revenue is around $700,000, and the cost to do this recommendation is around $100,000, given that the net profit will be around $600,000. But we do know that in a not-for-profit industry, it isn't always stable, which is why we decided to use a discount rate of 15%. So it'll give you around an NPV of $420,000, as you can see, the key takeaway of this is that with this additional profit, CAN can continue to make this impact on the individuals that need it most. So how are we going to ensure kids like Rachel have 
the, the necessary resources to go forth with uh, what they need in life to have a certain skill set. So the timeline to success, we did a little overview here based off of what needs to be done tomorrow. So as you can see, we need to find certain sponsors, develop a package so they know what is part of this deal. We also need to secure the sponsorship in the next year. And we also want to identify different volunteer spots uh, that your organization needs most. And to do so, we want to create kind of a volunteer uh, development basis and package. And then the next thing we need to do is secure these sponsorships and then develop those relationships with the university so we have a place to ensure this operational efficiency for your organization in the future. So I'd love to deep dive on our implementation here, but I'm just going to talk about the key steps we need to do tomorrow for each one. So with the sponsorship, we need to find the sponsor, develop a package, and then secure it. For the second part, we need to We need to find um, the certain volunteers within these different organizations, uh, create the volunteer side of page so it's very easy for them to manage where they want to volunteer and how to do so. We need to reach out to all these different volunteers and then secure them in the end. And the last part is reach out to those universities, as Joey mentioned, which includes developing that relationship, identifying which areas you need to uh, set aside for these different programs, and then also uh, facilitize these so obviously with every recommendation, there are certain risks that are involved. Um, the ones that we identified for our organization today is the decreasing relationship with the Vancouver Canucks. The way we decide to mitigate this is by finding sponsors that are not direct competitors. And the impact of that is it will create around $420,000 funding for CAN programs. A second risk we identified for your organization is the lack of corporate volunteers. How we decide to mitigate that is we use incentives through tax donation credit. And then also the impact of that is creating a source pool of volunteers to assist with programming. And the last risk we identified was time restrictions of facilities. And to mitigate that, we want to negotiate, which will impact, um, they'll create main sources of program facilities. <sighs> so how can we ensure that our recommendation is being successful in the future? So some, some KPIs that we identified for our organization is developing this corporate sponsorship. What we want to do is uh, establish the sponsorship by the end of this year. We also want to receive capital contribution of at least $150,000 from that corporate uh, sponsor that we decide to partner with. Uh, we also decided that we want to increase the demand of volunteers and to measure that we want to increase the number of engaged volunteers by 100 by the end of 2020. And the last part for our recommendation was sourcing appropriate facilities and to ensure that this is going forth we want to establish a relationship with universities by the, the end of this year and also decrease rental fees by the end of 2019 as well. So now I'm just going to let Joey recap what we talked about today. Thank you, Kristen. So let's just take a look at our, those key stakeholders that we mentioned at the beginning of the presentation. First, for the families who want to foster these social skills um, of, their, of their autistic sons or daughters. Their impact here is building that confidence and key life skills in these individuals so, so, so that they can be successful in with our donors who want to support the autism community, the impact here is fostering that citizen stewardship that we can see in our day-to-day -day activities through your programming and the potential volunteer initiatives that you can create through the corporate sponsorship. And lastly, the board of directors. You want to make sure that this achieves um, organization's mission and deliver a sustainable recommendation. And because of this recommendation, we can create an MPV of $420,000, which will help 360 more individual, uh, more families in the future. Now let's just touch upon our um, executive summary of city. So those issues, the lack of funding. Through a corporate sponsorship with companies such as MET, we can create an ideal relationship that will produce $420,000 in NMPV. Moreover, we get that pool of volunteers through corporate employers who will be enticed by tax incentives and moreover, having these potential volunteer opportunities, opportunities within the uh, not-for-profit sector to increase the staff and volunteering that you need right now. And lastly, with the facility of today's building, we again recommend you pursuing a, a relationship with BC universities because of their prime location and the number of programs they have available and the facility offerings. Now this creates 360 more families who will be helped. Now, Alina mentioned earlier in this presentation, imagine Rachel, um, uh, an autistic individual who needs the resources to be successful. But with this recommendation, you have $420,000 that you can invest in your existing programs that will help so much more. Okay. Uh, okay. 
can now begin the Q&A. <coughs> Essentially, with our implementation, we wanted to kind of just do a prototype using, um, like Joey said, the central Vancouver areas because that's where there is excess uh, capacity. Once we fulfill that demand first, then we want to look into how we can help these other surrounding communities. So maybe using other like. 